Thank you for the invitation. Uh, <coughs> so I'm going to report on joint some joint work with uh, Antti Kupiainen, who is in Helsinki, Jeremy Rod, who is in Marseille, Vincent Vargas. Uh, it's, ba it's based on two papers, and uh, we're working on uh, another one, which is also with Guillaume Bavrez, uh, about the Vira Zoro algebra. Okay, so it's going to be a talk about conformal field theory. Dimension two. So conformal field theory is a, a, it's a field of uh, an area of uh, theoretical physics, which has been developed since the 80s. Uh, was introduced by essentially the, the Russian school and especially uh, Polyakov, Zamolochikov, Belavin, and so on. In physics, and then in mathematics, uh, it has been uh, also considered by uh, people like Gra Graham Segal, and then uh, some uh, mathematician uh, in, uh, in using algebraic method like Frankel. They are called the vertex operator algebra. Uh, so this has been developed quite a lot. Uh, they're supposed to describe a statistical physics model. Which has a POTS model, easing model, and so on. So they are like a limiting uh, behavior of statistical physics model. But Polyakov, when he introduced uh, this, it was related to string theory. And he wanted to give a sense to quantum gravity in dimension two. Um, <coughs> so there is now a, a, a good formalism, a mathematical formalism of what is a conformal field theory. Uh, the one I will talk about is the one by Segal, because it's maybe the most geometric and, and maybe the simplest somehow to describe. And uh, it turns out that uh, finding concrete example of conformal field theory is actually pretty difficult. So you have a nice uh, axiomatic, but then if you try to construct uh, an example uh, which satisfies the axiomatic, uh, it's actually pretty hard. <laughs> and basically there is no, I don't think there is, there was really one complete example which worked in all generality, uh, which was done mathematically. So this is what we did uh, for one model at least. And this work, and, and, and we use a probabilist, probabilistic method that we combine with uh, scattering theory and uh, geometric tools. So let me start with uh, uh, definitions. Which go back to Segal of uh, a CFT. So I will always uh, CFT for conformal field theory. So CFT is a correspondence, in fact, a func functor uh, between several types of things. So you have the object. So the object or a disjoint union of uh, circles or the empty set. And then you associate uh, 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 tensor product of, of a Hilbert space, so H is, is going to be a Hilbert space, the parable, and if you consider the empty set, you just map to C. Okay, so these are the objects. Uh, then you have morphism. So you want to think of uh, circles as boundary uh, of a Riemann surface with boundary. You have morphism. Uh, there are uh, Riemann surfaces. Actually, Riemannian surfaces. 
oriented. So I will denote them sigma g. And then I will consider a marked point Uh, so the mark point or M point on the surface and uh, alpha or associated weight. Uh, so their weight. So to which mark point you associate a weight? So this is sigma, you keep G is a metric. And then metric. And then you put some uh, some point uh, inside. And to each point, uh, you associate a weight, uh, uh, x1, uh, you associate the weight alpha 1, and so on. And you want, maybe, at least for, for uh, the conformal filter, we, we will consider the alpha will be a little bit like uh, you can view them as uh, an angle for conical singularity at this uh, point. Uh, and also, I will, I will assume that uh, the, the boundary is geodesic. Huh? And to simplify, uh, of size 2 pi. It's not very important, but. Uh. And then uh, to uh, such a surface, yes, so in fact, okay, I also need a, a par, uh, 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 zeta 1. Uh, zeta m, some uh, some map uh, to uh, delta one sigma. Sorry, delta b. So let's say the the, the b boundary component. Uh, delta b sigma. Uh, these are parametrization. So I, I need to have a parametrization from the unit circle to each uh, boundary. Okay. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes, uh, the morphism will be... Ah, morphism, uh, it's, it's a cobordism, if you want. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, here, uh, of course, uh, the, the, yeah, so the parametrization uh, induce uh, either incoming or outgoing orientation somehow with respect to the inside. So indeed, uh, those which are pa parametrized positively will be, let's say, incoming and the other one outgoing. And I associate, um, so of course, when I, when I will glue, I will glue an incoming with an outgoing. Uh, and then I associate uh, here uh, what I call the an amplitude, which I denote by sigma, g, x, and alpha which is an element in this, in the, in this tensor product of the Hilbert space. So, uh, so B, B is the number of boundary components. OK. <coughs> uh, OK, uh, this, will, <laughs> this will come later. <laughs> At the moment, they are not, they are not angle, they're just point and, and, and weight. Um, and of course, uh, if the, the manifold is closed, it should be a value in C. So uh, if sigma g uh, is closed, uh, a sigma g x alpha is called uh, the correlation function. Uh, 
uh, of the surface with Mach coil. And, and this, is, this is what the physicists want to compute. This is an interesting uh, quantity in physics. So there are, no, there are numbers. No. Okay. So now uh, to have a conformal field theory, we need the condition. Uh, and the condition are first uh, uh, invariance by diffeomorphism. So you have to say that, uh, like preserving, preserving orientation. So you want that the amplitude uh, of the image is given by uh, the amplitude of the surface. And, and, and then it has, you have to compose the parametrization by Psi also. That's the first thing. And the second thing, which is more important, is uh, conformal covariance. So you want that if you rescale uh, your metric uh, by a positive uh, conformal factor, and let's say omega on the boundary is zero, it should be the same amplitude multiplied by uh, an, uh, uh, an anomaly. So the, an the anomaly, I will write it like this. So it's C over 96 pi integral of the omega square G plus twice A G omega divided G minus the sum of delta alpha i omega at x i. So what is k? k is the scalar curvature of g. And c uh, and delta, delta alpha, so uh, there are parameters of the theory. Where this guy is called the central charge, central charge of the CFT, and this one is this one is called the conformal weight, and is a function. It's a function of alpha. Uh, omega vanish on the boundary. Uh, yeah, maybe derivative also vanish. All this thing about geodetic boundary is not completely necessary. I just, uh, there are way to get rid of this, but uh, so that's the idea. So you should get uh, diffeomorphism invariance, conformal invariance. Okay. And the last part is uh, the functorial, functorial property, which means that if you glue two surfaces with boundary, the amplitude are going to compose. So what does it mean?
Do you see upstairs? Uh, and composition. Um, so if 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 we glue uh, sigma one g one x alpha with sigma two g two, so of course to glue uh, uh, this John Zig boundary condition. Uh, is better, but uh, if you want a smooth metric, you have the, the metric to, to be compatible. Um, X prime, alpha prime, uh, along, by, sorry, by identifying let's say the ice uh, uh, boundary component with the j boundary component of sigma 2 you get a long in this case you get a longer uh, pair of point in my example um, then the amplitude, so the result is, uh, let's call it sigma g uh, x alpha second, alpha second. Uh, the amplitude you get from this should be given by, uh, it's going to be the, uh, a partial trace, uh, I'll put uh, ij of uh, a Sigma one G one X alpha. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, so partial trace means uh, because you have tensor product, you contract uh, the I's component with the J's component of the other one. So I will explain uh, uh, a bit more intuitively what it means. So. Sorry? No, 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 no. No, just a Libra space. Ice component. Uh, otherwise, if it's finite dimensional, it's not really a quantum field theory or conformal. I mean, generally, you want really infinite dimension. So what people do usually, that they, they, they try to, uh, to approximate by finitely dimension, finite dimensional spaces and see what's going on when you take the limit. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, you need uh, the amplitude uh, to set to be uh, uh, such that you can compose. But here, if you map uh, as an element uh, like here, uh, it's fine. Yeah, it's a scalar product in this case. So I uh, sorry uh, of a sigma of a, uh, sigma. Two. Okay, uh, let me, so these are the axioms. Uh, maybe let me give uh, a, yes, Wait. yes. Can you have one, but what's going on? So you always, when you glue, you always glue incoming without gluing. Sure. Yes, yes. No, in principle, it should be associative. So, uh, what do yeah. Now here, here the result should be the same. I mean, if you glue, I, I, I'm not sure if I understand the question, but if you glue, if you have to do several gluing, uh, if you glue uh, 
one piece together and then another piece together, it should be the same in the end. That uh, it does not depend on the order. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm just asking this, uh, if you, you glue one by one, that's, that's the definition. Yeah, yeah, they're labeled, of course. Yeah. Okay, so let me explain the intuition here. So what, what is H? H should be uh, L2 of the space of field on S1 with respect to some measure, which I will call mu0. And E of S1 is the space of, let's say, of functions on S1. Okay? So you want to quantize, you want to do quantum filtering. So you want to quantize the space of function on a manifold. You want to quantize an infinite dimensional space. So this is what H should be. Now what should be uh, A, the amplitude, A sigma GX alpha. It should be an element uh, in the tensor product of these guys, which you can view as uh, the, uh, the, the space of field on the, on the product, uh, sorry, an L2 function on the, 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 the product of the space of field on S1 with respect to the uh, product measure, where B is the number of components uh, of uh, sigma. Okay, which is uh, And what should be A? A should represent, uh, it should be the, inte the integral over the space of field on the surface. Okay, so E sigma, the space of function on the surface. Uh, of product, so here I'm, I'm using uh, the case that I will consider later. In, in general, uh, you have to put something called vertex operator here, but I'll take the particular case that I'm interested in. So it's going to be, uh, the vertex operator would be exponential of the field evaluated at the point multiplied by, by the weight. And then you have an action, uh, S sigma G, of phi d phi, uh, where this should be a Lebesgue type measure, Lebesgue measure in infinite, or uniform measure somehow. And, uh, and S uh, sigma g is a map from the space of field on sigma to, uh, let's say, r. Or R plus actually. Of course, if you want to do quantum filtering, you should map to complex number, but uh, we're, we're doing Euclidean filtering here. So S is uh, called an action. So somehow the theory, the CFT, the confirmed filtering you're, you're looking at, will depend on the choice of action. Okay? So an example. Uh, yes. An example is, for instance, uh, the free field theory, where the action 
is just the integral. I'll put a 1 over 4 pi of uh, d phi where g and sigma and g. Okay. So this is this would be a Gaussian uh, measure here. If you if you look at the the so you, you, the idea is that. Uh, you, you want to see exponential minus s uh, sigma g phi d phi as a measure on the, on, on the space of field on, on the surface. Okay? And if you take, for instance, uh, this uh, thing, you get the, uh, this would be Gaussian in, in this case. This would be a Gaussian measure. Okay? And the composition, let me just uh, quickly explain the, the composition law, wh where it comes from. It's quite uh, useful to see it. The gluing. Uh, assume that uh, the the assume that the the action is local. So it means what it means local. It means that if you take a surface, you decompose into along a, a curve C. Uh, the, the action should be given by the sum of the action on sigma 1 and on sigma 2. So for, for instance, uh, this is the case with this, this thing, right? So if, if this is local, locality, then uh, the, the amplitude, so here, let, let's, let, let's assume I, I don't take mark point. So I don't necessarily need my mark point. So what I want to compute is the the, 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 the total mass of this measure on the space of field on, on, on sigma. I want to do a disintegration of the measure. So what I'm doing, I, I, I disintegrate by putting a conditioning on the value of the function, but restricted to this curve where I split my surface. So what it means? It means that I will integrate on the space of function on the circle. Then I put, uh, I decompose my, my exponential uh, minus s into two parts. So I guess I, I get, uh, I get this, phi one d phi one, right? Now I integrate on the space of field on, on sigma one, but I condition the value of phi one. Uh, on C will be given by phi, and I will integrate in phi later. And then I do the same on the other one. By 2 restricted to C is phi, and then it's exponential minus S2 of G over sigma 2 of phi 2 d phi 2. Okay, so this is a function of phi, and this is nothing more than the amplitude of sigma 2, uh, g restricted to sigma 2 of phi, and, and here is the amplitude of sigma 1, uh, g restricted on sigma 1 of phi. So you see that you, what you get is a scalar product. It's a scalar product in the Hilbert space H where h, you, if, if h you view it as the space of field on the curve with respect to mu zero, which would be uh, uh, d phi, which is this formal measure. Okay, so this is where, where this this uh, glue this functorial property come. It comes just from disintegration of the measure. So of course, this is all physics. Uh, a priori, this does not make sense. So this is why Segal said, uh, well, let's formalize thing and just say that uh, this thing should be represented by an, an element in the Hilbert space. And, and then. But then if you, if you ask all these axioms to be satisfied, try to construct an example. It's <laughs> basically you, you will not be able to do, except maybe for the free field. And for the free field, you get the determinant of Laplacian. And this is all this uh, Burgeler, Fried, uh, Friedlander, Kepler formula, gluing formula, and so on. Now, now we want to define uh, um, a non-free theory. Uh, yes. 
by the conformal invariance, you can. Con uh, it suffices to do it for uh, for conformal uh, for a hyperbolic uh, surface, and then actually uh, you see that you should get a function on moduli space by the diffeomorphism invariance. So there is, a, in fact, indeed, uh, it's a good remark, there is, in general, a, a, a conjecture in physics, uh, a general conjecture, which say, uh, this theory is really beautiful, actually. It's, it says that, more or less, all these conformal field theories should be integrable theory, and you should be able to compute all the correlation functions explicitly. Because there is a lot of uh, symmetry in the, in the system, which are given by this uh, conformal, uh, conformal transformation. So there is a, a general uh, conjecture in physics. Of course, <laughs> I call it a conjecture for physicists. is uh, almost an axiom. This is how they construct the theory, <laughs> which is called the conformal bootstrap. Huh? Uh, which tell you that uh, if uh, if sigma g x alpha is closed, uh, closed surface with smart point, uh, then in fact uh, the the correlation function, which is I, I denote it uh, a the amplitude in this case, it's an element in C. It should be given by the integral on the spectrum of the theory to the power uh, 3h minus 3 plus m. So the genus is h for this surface. So you integrate on some subset of C to the power of the dimension of moduli space. Then you get uh, a first term, which I denote like this, rho of p and alpha. And then the square of a uh, holomorphic function on the moduli space, uh, fp of q square dp. So what is fp? It's called the conformal block. Of the theory, conformal block. Uh, it's it's holomorphic uh, uh, in Q, where Q is a is a complex uh, or complex parameters on moduli space. Of a surface with uh, genus G. Uh, sorry, genus H and uh, M mark point. Uh, and, and this is, uh, this is, this function should be universal. Universal in the sense that uh, depends only on uh, central charge and uh, conformal weight. You remember these two parameters uh, I, 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 which were appearing in the conformal anomaly? There was this C and this delta, I don't know, here. This C and delta, this function of alpha. But the conformal block should be something which depends only in these two parameters. And they are representation theoretic. They are constructed using uh, representation theory of Virazor algebra. And what is rho? Rho should be equal to a, a product, a finite product, uh, from I to, let's say, uh, n of uh, c three point of uh, beta i one beta i two beta i three, where beta i uh, j belong to either uh, uh, p one p three h minus three plus m. So these are these parameters uh, living in the spectrum to this power. 
and uh, alpha 1, alpha n. And what is C3 point of uh, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3? This is just the amplitude of the Riemann sphere with the canonical metric and with a mark point uh, 0, 1, infinity and weight uh, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. You take the, so this is called the three point function. Three point function or, or structure, structure constant. And this one depends on the theory. Of course, it depends on the central charge, but, it, but you can have se several theories with the same central charge, a priori. Yeah, so the spectrum is the subset of C and is the, is the spectrum of the theory. That's what the physicist call. So what it is, the spectrum, in general, the spectrum of the theory should be the spectrum of a, a, uh, the spectrum of a certain operator, which I hope to come to, of a certain operator uh, acting on H, uh, on the Hilbert space. So this is the general conjecture. Yeah, Lebesgue measure. So it's quite, uh, quite nice because in the end, all the correlation functions should be given by this universal thing, which are coming from Virazo algebra and the three-point function. And this is in, in physics how they construct uh, actually the theory. Sorry? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the conjecture is that, uh, yes, I mean, yeah, that, that if there is a theory, it should satisfy the axiom first, and it should be given by such a formula like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The problem is this conformal block. In physics, there are formal series, and they're, they're not able to prove they converge, actually. There are formal series in, in, the, in the moduli parameter. So they do it numerically, and they, they show that uh, when, you when you decompose your surface in two, because this is, this is associated to a, a certain decomposition of your surface in two pieces, into uh, pairs of pont, basically, this formula here. And you have to show that when you change the decomposition, you get the same formula. Okay, so let me come to Liouville theory now. So the Liouville CFT, the, the action, the so Liouville the uh, theory is uh, one of the first uh, CFT, actually, which was considered by Polyakov. He was trying to develop, actually, it seems, uh, uh, conformal field theory to, to understand this Liouville theory. Uh, so S of phi G is equal to 1 over 4 pi integral of d phi square G plus Q times the scalar curvature of phi plus exponential gamma phi d G on the surface. So what is Q? Q and gamma are coupled in a certain way, like this. So you have two parameters, one is gamma, one is Q. So you see uh, the Gaussian term, then you have a curvature term, which is linear in the field, and then you get an exponential in the field. So you want to define, uh, the goal is to define uh, the formal measure uh, minus exponential minus S of phi d phi. So what we proved uh, in a series of work, sorry? The free field theory would be when uh, you don't have this term and don't... No, I, in fact, uh, in the theory, there should be, we can add the parameter here, mu, and then you take mu equals zero. And, but to simplify, you take mu equals one.
Okay. So theorem is that uh, uh, there exists uh, a probabilistic uh, construction of the amplitude for each uh, for each surface with boundary for each Riemann surface actually when i mean probabilistic it means that uh, it's an expectation of some random variable uh, which satisfy all the uh, Segal axiom that's the first thing, so it's really a CFT and the second thing, it satisfies the conjecture which means in particular uh, this gives a definition definition of the conformal block which is a converging, we, we show it's a conver actually a, a good holomorphic function is converging um, so <laughs> it'll be a bit long to explain the construction but I can explain you a couple of things. So what is the Hilbert space? In fact, uh, what we do, we, we come back to the physics heuristic. Uh, we define the amplitude uh, by giving a sense to the formal integral. So the Hilbert space H is equal to L2 of a negative Sobolev space on S1. So S is a fixed positive number with respect to a certain measure mu0. And how we define mu0? So H minus S of S1, you view it as, as the, the set of function uh, phi tilde of theta, which are Fourier series on the circle and then uh, minus zero plus c so c is just uh, the, the zero mod if you want of the Fourier series and with, and with a growth uh, that the sum of one plus n to power minus two s uh, phi n square is convergent so you can view the, the sobre space on s1 as just a series so you can identify this as uh, ah, uh, and, and, and phi is real valued so you get uh, phi bar is phi minus n uh, and phi n we write it uh, like this Uh, for n positive and uh, so xn yn yn in r and we and, and what is uh, mu zero so we define mu zero to be the Lebesgue measure on the Lebesgue measure on the constant mode and then on the non-constant mode we put a Gaussian measure an infinite Gaussian measure so it means uh, Uh, dyn dxn uh, over two pi. So this is what is mu zero on 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 the set of uh, on uh, r two uh, power n times r, where, where we identify uh, the 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 negative Sobolev uh, space on S one by its Fourier series uh, like this and real value. So this is a Gaussian uh, Gaussian measure on uh, Gaussian time Lebesgue on Sobolev space where Lebesgue is on the zero mode. 
so this is really the space of field in the physics sense. And, and this, using probability, you can really define it properly. And um, I can give you uh, uh, the amplitude, for instance, uh, if sigma is, cl is closed, the amplitude should be a number. And the way you define it is something like this. So you take the expectation of um, exponential minus 1 over rho pi integral of the scalar curvature time q time xg on sigma uh, plus exponential gamma xg divided g. Uh, then there is, sorry, plus gamma c. Uh, C. C. So we define this is the definition. And what is XG? XG is a random combination of eigenfunction of the Laplacian on the surface. So this is an autonormal basis of uh, L2 of sigma. Uh, with Laplacian like this. And what, what are AN? They are uh, IID I, I Gaussian in uh, N01. So you define, uh, what you do, you define a random field. It's called the Gaussian free field. It's a random combination of eigenfunction of the Laplacian. The covariance of this field is, is just the green function. Is the green function of the Laplacian. Uh, this lives uh, in a negative Soboré space on the surface for, for any, almost surely for any S. And you define this like this, so you have to define uh, this thing. So uh, this is a, a, a distribution, but you, because the curvature is smooth, you can do the pairing. The main problem is to define this object. Uh, Exponential of the field because uh, this guy is Sobolev. So exponential of Sobolev function, negative Sobolev function does not make sense. And for this, one has to use a renormalization procedure. So this was first done by Kupiainen, David Rod Vargas, and, and this goes back to some work of Jean Pierre Kahn. So for this, you need probability. You need to give a sense to this. And basically, the idea is you smooth your field by convolving, by doing an approximation of identity. You convolve xg by this. Then you look at the, uh, or, you or equivalently, you cut, you cut infinitely many terms. You look at the limit. You will see that this explodes, but you, get, you, you, you throw out the divergent term and, and you show that this converge. Doing this, you can define this. And the fact that, so this gives, of course, you have to prove that everything converges because that's how you integrate in, 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 in this variable. And by doing this, um, because it, it, it really gives a sense to the Feynman integral, you can actually uh, realize this uh, decomposition of surfaces by conditioning your field on the, on the circle. So you, if you put a conditioning on, of x, uh, on a if you have your surface that you want to cut, you put a conditioning on, on this Gaussian free field on, on, on here, you actually are able to decompose your field. And this is where this Hilbert space uh, h appears. So somehow the field phi here is nothing more than the restriction, uh, if you want, uh, of this Gaussian free field on the curve you, you, you split. So doing this, then we can show that... Uh, uh, yes, yes. So th this is a definition for closed surface. Now if you want a definition for surface with boundary, you have to put a conditioning. So you, you take the same definition, but you condition the value of the field. So it's, a, it's a conditional expectation. You condition the value of the field to be equal to phi. So if you have a boundary, you, it will be a function of phi. And then you condition the value of xg uh, to be phi on c. And then you show it converge and so on. Exactly. So this is why you need to use probability. <laughs> So there is a whole thing that, uh, uh, because this is not a, uh, this is 
there's not any uh, uh, sobers functions here. Here it's coming from uh, it has this covariance, and using probabilistic uh, tools, you can actually show that almost surely this restrict to the boundary and give in law in distribution law it give it give this field p which which has this uh, measure uh, here as the law. Uh, support of which measure? This one? It's supported, uh, I think, uh, everywhere in uh, Sober Space. And maybe uh, just to, to finish, uh, wh wh where is the spectrum coming? Uh, where is the spectrum coming? Because in this conjecture, I told you the spectrum. So if you do this, you see that the central charge, C, central charge, it's equal to 1 plus 6 Q square. The, the, the conformal weight delta alpha, they are equal to this. The spectrum is equal to. Uh, Q plus I R, so it's this line in C for the for this Liouville theory defined defined using this, and and there is an operator. What is H? There is an operator H, which is a, a Laplace operator on the on the zero Fourier mode plus uh, an infinite dimensional uh, harmonic oscillator. And plus a nonlinear term, which look like this. So you, 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 so this is acting uh, on on the on L two of uh, R time R two to the power n with respect to mu zero, this is Gaussian measure. So you have an operator acting on L2 of an infinite dimensional space, which is this negative sober space on the circle. This operator is a, is a Laplacian on the real line. Then you have a, an infinite dimensional harmonic oscillator. So it's, it's a sum of harmonic oscillator on each Fourier mode, but with a shift given by n. And then a potential, which is the, the, the part of the nonlinearity of the theory which has an exponential gamma c, and, and a potential v, which is positive, which is the mass of this uh, random measure that you, that you define uh, uh, using this uh, Kahn property, this Kahn, uh, this Kahn uh, res probabilistic result. So this is, a, uh, in general, an LP potential. So v, at least in, for some parameter, v belongs to some LP, or p. Uh, Less than uh, 2 over gamma over 2. And to, to prove this theorem, uh, basically what you have to do is uh, to, to, to prove a spectral decomposition of, to, to prove a Plancherel formula, to construct the, the generalized eigenfunction of this operator. And what is quite, uh, quite beautiful in, in all this approach is that how, you, how, you, how do you guess what is this H? H is actually. Uh, Defined by looking at its propagator, so its heat kernel, and E minus TH has integral kernel given by the amplitude, it's the amplitude of the annulus uh, Z belong to uh, exponential minus T1. This is the annulus. So you take this annulus here between 1 and exponential minus t. You take its amplitude, so you take the metric, uh, the metric which is uh, invariant by scaling. Take the amplitude, it's a function of two, of two fields, one on the exterior circle, one on the interior. It's a function of an L2 function uh, of, of two things. So you view it as, a, as, a heat, as an integral kernel. It defines a Markov semigroup, and h is actually given by this. 
And you see it's a semi-group because when you glue annulus, you get bigger annulus, and by conformal invariance, uh, it should be what it is. And, and what are the, the eigenfunction of H? The eigenfunction of H are the amplitude of the disk here with a mark point. So somehow you diagonalize your, you diagonalize your operator using amplitude of certain geometric surface, typically the annulus and the disk. And uh, doing this, uh, you, you, you start with your, uh, with your uh, correlation function. You, you split it into pairs of point. And uh, you decompose, uh, so split it into pairs of points, you get prod product in these Hilbert spaces, many product. And each product, you decompose it on, on a basis of eigenfunction of this operator. And because the eigenfunction of the operator or the amplitude of disk, it amounts to, to, in the end, to take pairs of points and glue some disk on it uh, with a mark point. And this is why you get three point function, somehow, which, which appear in this conjecture, conjecture formula. Yes. Yeah, they're yeah, they are in all HS and maybe H log something or no, no, they're not continuous. They're never. I think uh, with probability zero. <laughs> but I remember that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, one dimension is yeah, but here is two dimension. Uh, I mean, it's it's coming from 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 here somehow. I mean, it's coming from the measure on the surface, and uh, then you restrict on the circle. So it's not really like the, the the if you compute the correlation of this field phi, it's a log correlated. It's a log log of exponential i theta minus uh, i theta prime. So it's really diverging at the diagonal. Okay, so I should stop here. <laughs>